can't do this without my fox. Hello, it's Samantha again, here to give you more information and tell you another story. <laughs> One of the first appointments that I had after I found out that I had cancer was I needed to go and have a port placed so that I would be able to receive chemotherapy. If you don't know what that is, it's just this thing that goes into your chest, under your skin, and a catheter is connected to it that uh, goes into a vein. If they were to hook an IV into my arm every single time I needed to receive chemo, it would tear up all the veins in my arm. So that's why they do this, so that it goes into a bigger vein that can handle everything. And for me, it was really nice because I knew the doctor who was going to be performing the surgery. So since it's not a major surgery, you don't need to be completely unconscious. But with this drug they give you, you are supposed to be able to sleep through the surgery. Um, I mean, if you wake up, it's fine, but at least you're not supposed to remember it. The drug's supposed to make you forget everything. But I am here to explain the entire thing to you because I remember basically the entire thing. This drug just did not work on me as at all. <laughs> so I guess I will start from the very beginning. The first thing that happened was I went into a room and my boyfriend and my mom were with me and my dad came later. So I, and then I had to put on a hospital gown and get ready for everything. One doctor guy comes in and he starts asking me a bunch of questions. He's asking like if I have any medical problems with me or they need to like be careful of things and I don't because I was perfectly healthy, you know, except for the cancer. He's like asking if I smoke which I don't, if I do any kind of drugs, and I don't, and he's asking if I drink alcohol. I don't drink alcohol really at all, ever. And so he writes all this stuff down, and he says to me, this is gonna be so easy for you. They're barely gonna have to give you any of this medicine, it's gonna knock you right out. <laughs> they hooked me up to an IV. I get rolled out, and it's so cold, and they keep giving me blankets. The doctor that's gonna be doing surgery comes over and starts talking to me, and he starts talking to my family. Then he shows me the thing that's gonna be placed inside me in case I was interested in seeing what it looked like. And then everybody else goes, and I think we just like have to wait outside. And then that doctor, he also said to me, this is gonna be so easy for a person like you. I get wheeled into the room, so I have to move off of the bed that I was in and onto a different table. I think that's when they gave me the sedation drug. The doctor's explaining to me that I'm not gonna be completely unconscious. Since I'm not gonna be completely unconscious, it's possible that I will wake up during the surgery, and if I feel anything other than just some tugging, then I should make that known to the doctors and I shouldn't be afraid to speak up and I should tell them if I feel any pain. In my head, I'm just like, that doesn't really seem like this is gonna happen, but okay, like, I'll make sure I do that. There were other nurses and people in the room, I'm not really sure of their titles, um, but they were just like helping out. So then at some point the doctor says to me, so are you feeling any different? I didn't feel any different at all. So I was just kind of like, what am I supposed to be feeling? And then he's just having a regular conversation with me and he's just like, okay. And then he turns and looks at the nurse and was like, can you just give her some more? So I guess they gave me more of the, the drug right then. I'm still just sitting there waiting for the surgery to start. He again says to me, are you feeling the effects of it yet? And I still said, uh, I don't really know. <laughs> Looking back on it, I do think that I felt a little bit different after that second dose. I felt just a little bit more out of it, but still perfectly, perfectly aware of what was going on around me. And I think he said to the nurse to give me some more. I think he, he said like a half. They came over and they were like, just try to go to your happy place. And I was like, that's kind of stupid, but okay, whatever. And they were like, just think of like the beach and like something. And, uh, and they were like, what's your happy place? And I was like, Disney World. And they were like, oh yeah, of course it's Disney World. And then after that, I don't really remember much. So there was a period of time when I was completely asleep. I don't know how far into the surgery they were when I woke up, but it was probably near the beginning. I remember being awake for a pretty good amount of time while they were doing stuff. It was numb, I didn't feel any pain, but I just felt some tugging. I just kept waking up and they just kept telling me to go back to sleep. And so I kept trying to go back to sleep and then I would just wake up again because someone would talk or I'd feel some tugging and it was just kind of annoying because like I was trying to sleep through the surgery but I just couldn't. So then I was kind of like, okay, well since I'm awake, let's just, let's just see what's going on. So I kept kind of trying to look at what they were doing but I was supposed to be keeping my neck this way 
And so, like, the nurse kept coming over, and she was just like, keep your neck this way. Just keep looking this way. And then, I, and then I would, and then I would try to go to sleep, and then I would get bored, and I would bring my neck back up again. And also, I was a little bit out of it, so I wasn't following the instructions perfectly. I couldn't really see much, because I can't really see the, that area that he would have been working on. I kept thinking he was talking to me, but he wasn't. At one point, he said something like, Okay, in a minute I'm gonna need you to help me. I thought he was talking to me, so I was like prepared to do something in a few minutes. So I was like looking at him. He was just like, okay, like I'm just gonna keep working here. I don't know why she's staring at me. In my mind I'm like, was he talking to me or was he talking to the nurse? He was probably not talking to me. And so then after a few minutes went by and he didn't ask me to do anything. I was like, okay, he was probably not talking to me. Still, the nurse is coming over and it's like, keep your head this way. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, sorry, I keep forgetting. And I just kept trying to go to sleep and I just kept waking up for however long the surgery was, basically. And then I remember him saying, okay, I'm almost done here. And then I remember the nurse coming over and looking at it and she was like, wow. That looks really good. That's like the best I've ever seen. So that made me feel good. I'm like, wow, what a pro. I remember looking down at one point and being a little bit freaked out because I saw uh, what I thought was like a bunch of blood, but it was actually like this brown soap stuff. Yeah, so he, he finishes up and he's like, all right, I'm done. And he was like, do you remember basically everything that happened? And I was like, no, I think that there are some parts that I don't remember, but pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and I was really bored, so I asked them if they had my phone, because I remember right before the surgery, they like put it off to the side. Then they were going to wheel me back off into the room where my family was, and I sent a Snapchat to Gray. I did only send this Snapchat to him. If you watched my video about my egg retrieval surgery, you'll see that I sent a Snapchat right after the surgery to all of my shrieks. <laughs> so my family's telling me that the doctor had come back in and talked to them before, and he had said that the procedure had gone really well, but they had to give me a lot of the anesthesia. It was really nice of them to give me a lot. So they are just trying to give me more of it so that I would be able to go to sleep and so that I would be able not to remember anything that had happened, but clearly I remember everything that happened and I didn't go to sleep very well. I'm not completely traumatized from this experience. Like, yes, I would have preferred to not be awake during that, but nothing hurt me. But they had given me a lot of drugs, so they said they were going to send me out of there in a wheelchair, which they apparently don't usually have to do for that kind of procedure because it's not that big of a procedure. And I was just like, I'm fine. But then like, I kind of like sat up and I was like, wow, I'm really dizzy. It's been a while. <laughs> wow, this is not fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got in a wheelchair and I was wheeled out of there. Then I went back to Gray's house and I basically slept for a really long time. There was some pain afterwards, like the area was sore. It actually kind of hurt a little bit when I would turn my neck this way. And so I think that's probably why when they were doing the surgery, they wanted me to keep my neck down like that because uh, it would like pull the skin in the right way. And I'm not really sure if that's the reason or not, but it healed very well. So it's been like three months after that procedure and I can show you. So right here, cut right there. Oh, <laughs> and then uh, right here. And I just had some chemo yesterday, so they access that area a lot, so it's red. So as you can see, this one up here healed like pretty well, but there's still a mark down here. So yeah, the surgery wasn't that bad. It went pretty smoothly, except for the fact that I was just awake for the whole thing. I'm not really worried about being one of those people that has like a horrible traumatic experience of waking up in the middle of an intense surgery, because this was not that intense of a surgery and I was meant to be conscious. It's just that I really wasn't meant to, to be as aware as I was, but it was fine with me. The surgery didn't take that long and it was being done by a doctor that I really trust, so I was fine. <laughs> that is the story of my port placement and that is the story of how I was awake and aware during my entire surgery. <laughs>
Follow me on Instagram if you would like to tag along for my cancer journey. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and check out some of the other videos I've done and leave a comment below if you have any suggestions of other things that you would like to see. And also to support me, subscribe to my channel to know when I upload more amazing videos. Yeah, that's basically it. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.